cooks until there is wine. And wine is not even open yet. Hi, what's happening? Hi, 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 what's going on, guys? Um, welcome. I'm gonna open my wine while we chat. It's been one of those days where everything took longer than I thought. The kids are home on spring break. And um, I'm here, I'm in. Let's do this thing. Hi, guys. Oh, I see all you people. I love seeing you. It's so good to have you here. Um, I'm just going to keep the Chateau Montalina rolling. I'm drinking a Chateau Montalina Chardonnay, one of my favorites. We obviously went to um, Napa before this pandemic got going, thank goodness, and joined, well, we already were members of Chateau Montalina, but we like upped our order and we just got a shipment. So. I'm in my wine zone with the good stuff. And um, yeah, I'm opening it. So say lovey. So okay, as I um, as I open my Chateau Montalina Chardonnay, you please tell me what are you drinking? Are you having a cocktail? Are you having coffee? Where in the world are you? And what is what are you drinking today? That's what I'm hoping to find out. So please comment that below. Um, if you're having a cocktail, cool. If you're having a mocktail, cool. If it's like morning and you're like, what is wrong with you, Sandra? Cool. Um, you do you. I'll do Chardonnay. <laughs> okay. So with all seriousness, I am going to start talking about the business of interior design. That is what I've promised you. And that is what we will do. And I almost forgot to say happy St. Patty's Day. Um, a total aside, but um, I look horrible in green, so I have no, you know, personal uh, green to share with you today, but I'm a big fan. And I did my 23andMe um, DNA thing, and I was really hoping to have this, like, a smidgen of Irish in me so that I could just turn up a notch on the St. Patty's Day celebration and everything. No dice, no dice, not even a smidge in this uh, DNA profile. So there's that. Um, but also, we found out that my daughter's pony, her birthday is today, St. Patty's Day. So A, I wanted to say happy birthday to Lulu, and B, I think that we should give Lulu an honorary name of Lulu St. Patrick, right? If your birthday is St. Patrick's Day and you're like a gorgeous little Palomino pony, feels like the right name. So, um, so happy St. Patty's Day. Um, like I said, I don't do the green. And the wine is not opening for me. We're having all of the things. Okay, so like I said, <laughs> I promised we'd talk about design and then I completely changed my mind. Um, we are gonna talk about how to optimize your website and blog. And if I can get this wine open, we will dive right in. So okay, optimizing website and blog. Bring me those questions, people. Um, I'd really love to know what are you struggling with? What is going on in your world um, with making your website and your blog work better for you in your interior design business? Or any business, really, truly. Okay, so let's talk about the purpose of your website. But let's think about that while we pour Chardonnay, shall we? I'm gonna try to pay attention this time because remember, you guys, a couple weeks ago, I poured myself a ridiculous goblet and it was um, comical. Anyway, so okay, the purpose of your website. So the journey for a potential client for us is it usually starts on social media, right? You either have a referral, someone you know personally, or someone who knows someone who's worked with you or you come across somebody on social media or out in the interwebs. So we start in social media and then what we're doing in social media is we're trying to get them over to our website, okay? So then they can they get on your website and then we're trying to capture their contact information so that we can stay in touch with them. So it's just not enough for them to become a fan or a follower on social. Unless they DM you there and you're like off and running booking a consult, great. But the interior design that we do is luxury, you know, full service. We have a three room minimum. So we really, there's a lack of dance that goes on prior to being hired. And it's often getting to know us and getting to trust, know, like, and trust us before they hire us. So we don't do little one-off consults. We don't do, you know, we don't kind of have that, um, that quick hit, we're really, you know, courting each other to get into a long-term relationship. And so getting them onto our newsletter list so that they can start to be part of like that inner circle and we're emailing them on a regular basis is huge. Okay, that is the goal. I found the pour some wine. Let's hit cheers, shall we? Cheers. Hi, hi, hi. Hi, y'all. Um, okay, so today we're gonna go over and cover why great branding isn't enough when it comes to your website 
how to get your blog to work for you, and a simple website update to get potential clients onto your newsletter. So um, let's dive in, shall we? Hi, everybody. Oh, my God. Lou, I miss you so much. Mwah. I was just thinking about you. Like, can we just get, we need a Zoom. We need a FaceTime. We need to drink wine. Happy St. Patty's Day, gorgeous. You and all your green. I was just saying, I hardly ever wear green. I think the one time I showed up in a teal top, it's really not green. So it's got enough blue in it that I don't look dead. Um, I was talking on your panel and it was like everyone else who also showed up for the panel also had on podcast green. And we just look like the super fans that we are, as you know. Okay, so good to see you here. So, okay, so we are, um, I just want you guys all to please feel free to put your questions right in the chat. Sarah Harris is on the other end of this fabulous internet, um, curating and sending those questions my way. So um, anything you've got going on um, that, you know, and again, you can go off topic. We will save it for the next episode that it fits or build a whole episode around it. You know, we love to do that. Um, but if you've got questions about your website, about the purpose of social media, if you blog, how often you blog, should you blog? I know that we have a lot of blog questions and I've always opened up that can of worms. So again, please feel free to throw those questions in the chat. We'll get to as many as we can. Okay, so let's go through the questions that we've kind of created this episode around and we'll start diving into those and maybe they'll spark something um, that will help your business or you can ask more questions. Okay, so one of these questions was, I don't have a website, but I have a house profile. That's enough, right? Okay, so here's the deal, people. Obviously, having your social media accounts, house, Pinterest, Instagram, Facebook, whatever it is, is wonderful. It's a wonderful way to be out in the world, interacting with the humans that want interior design and want to hire you. But you don't own those profiles. OK, and house is one of those where um, by putting your photos on house, you actually automatically give them the right to your photos. So there are times where you, someone will see something, you know, how, how sometimes people grab your photos and then do like a shop the look and they just like grab it and they are off and running, making sales based on your photo. So that kind of stuff. Um, it's something you need to just read the fine print or do the research around when you're posting anything. Um, but also, just because you have a lot of followers out on social or you're, you know, getting good traction out there, doesn't mean that they're that you're getting their contact information and that you can reach out to them directly and nurture that relationship. So you are. It's great to be out there on social, but the goal is to get them back to your newsletter to get them onto your newsletter list so that you can cultivate that relationship. We know that our clients come from our email list, okay? Um, and like I said, we do have you know a bigger barrier to entry. We take only big projects, et cetera, et cetera. But those big projects, those kind whales that we love, love, love so much, they come from someone who is in our world, who is paying attention to us and who gets to know us over time. All right. So I'm blogging weekly and it's so draining and not working. What do you suggest? So for those of you that are out there blogging away, A, congrats, it's a ton of work. And B, I will share with you the strategy that we use, right? All I can do is tell you what we do and how it works for us. What we do is we blog when we are inspired to do so. When we feel there's something that is really relevant or really helpful that would push out the right information in a timely manner. So what I mean by that is we are much more strategic with our blog posts rather than consistent. So there's not, in my opinion, there's not a crazy ton of value in just producing content, producing content, producing content. It doesn't really bring a ton of return. Back in the day when blogging began in the dark ages and it was like 2007, we were blogging and it didn't matter what we blogged. As long as our website was being updated on a regular basis, Google liked it and pushed it forward. Now it doesn't, it has to be good content. So what I mean by good content is you want to go out there and like look at Yoast or talk to a professional, but like these SEO keyworded blog posts, these blog posts that are 
intentionally hitting the minimums, the minimum length, the minimum link backs, the minimum photos, the photos are tagged right. Um, and basically one of the most important things is like your headings and your titles are speaking just as beautifully to your ideal client as they are to Google. Okay, and this is a skill set that really takes some honing and some research and or hiring someone who knows what they're doing. It is learnable, it is doable. It's time consuming, right, to get these blog posts right. So um, that is a big part of why we don't, we don't force ourselves to feel compelled to do a blog post every week or even every month. Instead, we do one when we're inspired, when we have a topic that maybe we keep getting the same question. So in addition to an FAQ, maybe we are like, this keeps coming up, let's dive deeper into this topic. It's obviously on the tips of tongues of people that we wanna work with. It's, on, it's what our clients are asking us about. Um, so if they're asking us with this regularity, perhaps more people out there have that question and we could get in front of more eyeballs that are thinking about luxury interior design. OK, so that's how that whole thing starts to thread together. So I'm going to give you an example. So, for instance, we did a blog post recently that was all targeted around the best towns in New Jersey with good New York City commutes. So the best place to live in New Jersey with a good commute back to New York City. Why is that relevant now? Well, there's a lot of movement going on in the Northern New Jersey, New York City area. In the pandemic, everything going on, a lot of people were moving out of the New York City apartments and moving into the suburbs. Now they have to be in the city once a week, twice a week, or as needed, instead of every single day to sit at their desk and work. So we were seeing this influx of New Yorkers coming into New Jersey, and we felt the need, right? We got pinged to help them pick out their neighborhood. And so what we did was we did our top 10 neighborhoods so we can SEO keyword to those neighborhoods. Um, anytime you can link your neighborhood with your profession, so interior design, Montclair, New Jersey, I've created that link over the years. And so now in this blog post, I'm also linking Summit, New Jersey with in House of Funk Interior Design and Chatham, New Jersey with House of Funk Interior Design. You see the value? When someone types in their hometown and interior design, Google will know because I've told Google that that's me, okay? So you've got to talk to Google while talking to your kind whales. So it's a lot going on there, right? Professionals can help, of course. Okay, um, I think we hit that one and then gave like 800 examples, yeah? Okay, cool. All right, so we have another question. Do you have a section with the price of your services on your website? So I did. I, back when I charged hourly and it was just straightforward um, and I didn't do a custom quote per the scope of the job. Now I work flat fee and that's how I do it. When I was working hourly and I was at max capacity, right? I put my um, the cost of my services out on my website. It was a really helpful filter, right? So that I was getting less of the people that didn't quite fit my price point reaching out to me because if they did dig deep, they could see that maybe I was or was not within their price point. When I switched over to flat fees, obviously it's hard to put a flat fee out like that. Um, I also think that, you know, a lot of times it's, it's hard to swallow a price out of the gate without talking through what we offer, right? So all everyone does things, you know, in their own way. We really like to do um, renovations all the way through full furnishings. And so it's talking through about project management, about helping them build the team. You know, some of this is um, you want to get in there and sell your firm and sell your services before they make a decision based on price. When you are at crazy max capacity and you couldn't take one more client for a year that's when i put my pricing on my website because it was an automatic filter to help me say that only the people that are really serious are going to bust through that information and pick up the phone and call us all right so another question should i invest in a web developer is it worth it i'm a one woman show right now but looking to scale so by telling me that you're looking to scale, that you are intending to grow your business, then absolutely working with someone who can help you develop a website that Google likes and that potential clients love, 
well, let's put it the other way, that Google loves as well as potential clients is crazy important, right? So getting found by those ideal clients is so, so, so important. Um, it's 100% worth it. Uh, my business has taken a huge level up every time that I've invested in the infrastructure tech wise in experts to help propel me forward all the things. So if you're a one woman show trying to get to the next level, it's a matter of where you're going to invest next, because that is what you're going to need to do to get to that next level. Right, right. Okay. I need to drink wine. It's a little bit less sipping and a little bit more talking when I'm alone. I forget because the cheersing is very lonely when you're alone. Cheers people. All right, I love the waves. It's so good to see you all. Mm -mm -mm. Y'all make me feel like I'm a little bit less drinking alone in the house with a dress on. But isn't this a fun dress? Anyway, okay, I have contact form on my website for people to join my newsletter, but only getting a few signups per month. Why isn't this converting? Okay, so the big question is, I see this all the time, and um, it is... Totally fine. There are going to be times when someone goes to your website and just decides, I kind of want to keep in touch with this per this this company, this this person. I'm interested in this service. I want to hear more. Um, and so they might just put their name and email address right into that con stay in touch with us or sign up for our newsletter list or whatever, however you're saying it. But more often than not, we don't give out our email address because we don't want to be emailed, right? We don't want more newsletters. We don't want more marketing we are pretty protective of our email addresses. So what we have found is the best way to get an email address from someone is to give to that person. And the way that you deliver your great, big, beautiful gift is via email. So instead of, hey, give us your email address and we'll give you this checklist, you wanna be even more strategic. You wanna say, we have this amazing guide. We are going to help you with something. We are going to, and I love to even customize it because then they have skin in the game. We are going to take in your take in your information and give you the right guide for you. And then they give you that information. And then the way that they get that guide is awesome. We have the perfect guide for you. Enter your email right here and we'll deliver it directly to your inbox, okay? So again, we're not talking about we're gonna send you an email. We're not talking about we're gonna send you a newsletter. We're talking about we are going to help you. We are going to provide value. We are going to provide a solution. And we are just delivering it via your email. And then in that marketing, we are then asking, may we stay in touch with you via regular email? And they are opting into that. Um, those are the standards that have been put in place and we do follow those and recommend that you do too. So when I was giving that, that um, example of provide value, provide a thing, the more custom, the better, because then they can't wait to get their results or their guide or their help or their solution and they give you your email. And to give you a specific concrete example, we created a style quiz. So it is a very simple quiz. They go through, I don't know, it's like three minutes maximum. It's visual. So they just pick the, they literally click the picture that resonates with them most. And they are not complicated pictures. It's not like they have to spend time analyzing. And they go through this quiz and it pops out their like one of four styles, right? Genres, directions for their aesthetic. And I think about this with like all the other areas of life that this would be so helpful for. Like, you know, your better eating style, your ideal sleeping situation, your perfect clothing style. Like you can imagine, we know, we can walk into someone's house and see their style like that, but they might not know how to explain it. So this is a value that we are providing to them. So this style quiz that we created and then custom results get emailed to their client. Um, we bring in approximately 50 new emails a month, right? 50 new emails a month of potential clients who have taken our style quiz and requested that we email them the results. Okay, so think about that. 50 new leads every single month who are jumping onto our newsletter list, who are coming and asking to be a part of our world. I cannot tell you how valuable creating this once and then letting it keep going. I think we created this in 2016 or 17, this style quiz. We obviously update it and freshen the photos and freshen the results and freshen the give, um, but it is in, an incredibly valuable resource for our firm. 
So this is huge. All right, so um, what you wanna think about is what can you offer? What can you put together that will work that way? Now, we obviously worked with a web developer, um, the amazing Nicole Heimer, to create the tech behind it. Um, but where what it starts with is an idea of how you could customize and provide value. And then you take that to someone and have them help you build it. Okay, so we have another question. I'm gonna have a little sip of my cocktail. Mm -mm -mm. Okay, what is the difference between writing a blog and writing a newsletter? Is it that the newsletter gets sent versus a blog needs to be found to be a search? Excellent question. So um, the difference between writing a blog and a newsletter, you know what, it's all content, right? And for me, it's all providing value to potential clients. So going out there and saying, what could we help with? What could we, what, what could we expand on? What questions could we get asked all the time, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So the difference between a blog is that it sits on your website, right? It lives on your blog portion of your website. Now for me, you can't navigate to our blog easily via going to our website. You really, you land on the blog because Google puts you there when you're asking the Google a specific question and the blog post answers it. So you're right. So the blog post is found via search and that search is often the Google, right? So um, a newsletter gets emailed out to your list and gets, and what you're doing is you're communicating, nurturing and providing value to that list to stay in touch with them. Now, when, once you write the really good blog, or run, once you write the really good newsletter, that content can then cross over, right? So if you've written a, the most amazing newsletter of your life, don't just let that get emailed out once and go to like the land where newsletters die. Grab that content, cut and paste it into an Asana, reassign that to someone on your team who knows how to get in touch with the person who does SEO keywording and turn it into the most amazing blog post ever or vice versa. So, I mean, once you've had a great idea and you put the effort into editing and putting it all together, don't let that content just go out once. It should be sliced and diced into social media posts. It can be turned into a reel, an episode, if you do something like a design sips with your field, blogs, newsletters, all the things, okay? So again, I'm not a fan of the white piece of paper, blank slate, looking around going, what am I gonna talk about today? So, you know, all of this content can be moved and sliced and put into many, many forms, okay? It can be talking, it can be video, it can be newsletters, blog posts, social media posts, all the things. All right, more questions rolling in. Let's do it. Okay, I have SEO blog posts and they're getting a ton of views. How do I get my viewers on my newsletter? Okay, this is huge. So once you create an SEO keyworded blog post and it's good, and people are finding it and it's amazing. They've gotten to your website, right? This is awesome. But let's say that they're not connecting the next step of heading over to your portfolio, checking out your about me page and eventually taking your quiz or doing your thing. Like what if they're just not converting from a blog post reader to a, you know, a newsletter subscriber. So here's what you can do. You can take that blog post that's getting a ton of views and you can do a content upgrade. So what that means is you can take that post and you can say, what from this post is, is getting so much attention? What do they love? You can then take that and do a video that goes with it. And you can say, you know, click here to, to get a video where I deep, you know, dive so much deeper on this topic. They click on that, they give you their email address, you send them the video of you diving much, much deeper and going richer in the details to this topic. Okay, or a checklist that really gives them like the simple bullet points on how to make this happen for them. Or uh, it could be a, li a list of resources, right? It could be a whole bunch of hyperlinks of like, for instance, like today we're talking about SEO keywording, blog posts, blah, 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 blah. Like, we didn't do this, I don't I don't have this for you, but like top of my head, I could provide a list of people who do SEO keywording for interior designers, right? Like that would be a content upgrade from this episode of Design Sips, what we're talking about. It would be a way to take it one step further. Again, we didn't do that, sorry. Just came up with that right here in the now. But, um, but you can see, like you wanna brainstorm, like what goes with that content that you know is hitting a chord, that you know is being successful, then take it and, expand on it and make it even better and richer and more detailed. 
Um, all the opt-ins. Um, yeah, it doesn't need to be like a whole bunch of stuff, but just any, the idea is put out that SEO keyword blog post. See, you can go back in the back reaches of your um, social media and your analytics and everything. And you can see how people are coming to your website. What are they clicking on? How are they getting there? And then I love to say, let's bet on the horses that are already in the lead. Like, let's go to those posts that are already doing well and amp them up, right? Instead of trying to revive some posts that just, it just hit the skids. It was not good. I mean, still, we give it a little love. We add some new photos. We try, but let's bet on the horses that are already kicking butt and take that further and further. All right, all right, all right. Okay, so do we have another question? Um, all right, so this is just some notes. Once they've downloaded our opt-in or taken our quiz, then we wanna nurture them. So we worked with our web developer and creating a guide that will show you how we lead nurture and help to create your own. Okay, so this is huge. So once somebody decides that they wanna be in our world and they wanna, and they wanna jump on our newsletter list, we don't just hit them with the next monthly newsletter and you know get to know them by happenstance slowly over time. We have what's called a lead nurture series. And what that is, it's a series of emails that go out to a new subscriber to our list. So they're going to drip out once a week, then every three days, then once a week again. And it's like all very prescribed how like how they go um but it's basically an introduction it's a way to say hey i heard you're new here let me tell you about our firm and it's the way that we get to know them kind of like speed dating right we're gonna get into it and get to know them a little bit better kind of right when they've just said they want more of us so while it's fresh in their mind while they were thinking that they'd like to stay in touch with our brand we kind of amp it up then we also have a different lead nurture series when someone Tech, like when someone actually reaches out to our firm, either via our contact us form or phone call or email, when someone actually reaches out and says, hey, I'm a potential client, I'm actually thinking of hiring you, we also have a lead nurture series for that client. Because again, we wanna catch them, like they might've been on our newsletter list for two years now, and they finally raised their hand and said, hey, we're interested in having a conversation about a project. So we, again, same thing, we wanna take them while they're hot, while they're thinking about us, and we want to amp it up. And we wanna say, we're thinking about you too, we're, this would be a great fit, here's how we can help. So that lead nurture series is different. The first one is an introduction. This one, when a client's reached out to us, is really about what we can offer them and what we do for our clients, what it's like to work with us, what that could potentially look like. So you can see how one is like, hey, here's who we are, let's get to know each other better. And the other one is, you're right, you wanna get this house done. We want houses that are complete, inspiring, and functional, and here's how we can take that off your plate and help you make that happen. So lots of fun with lead nurtures. You are gonna wanna check out, it's, um, I'm sure Sarah Harris will send put the link down in, but it's houseofunk.com, six steps to a powerful lead nurture. You gotta check that out. Oh, there it is. It's not a short link. Anyway, all right. I'm gonna take a sip of wine because it feels like we covered it. What do you guys think? Lots of fun. Um, I would love to hear from you. What is going on? Are you... Are you a blogger? Are you thinking about it? Are you considering it? Do you use this as a method to get people to your website? And um, did you hear something new today about maybe taking those blog posts and lighting them on fire with opt-ins and different ways to get people's attention, right? By giving them something amazing. So tell me all about it. I'd love to hear. And um, I just want to remind you all, we are so excited. We have the standard opening up for enrollment again April 21st through April 28th, and you can find out so much more, including taking our demo module at interiordesignstandard.com. And that's it, people. It was so good to hang out. Finally got my wine open. And thank you so much for joining us for Design Sips. Have a great week.